Hello and welcome to this quick look at one of the features in Worldographer. Someone had asked me a question about the trace underlay functionality, so I thought it would be a good topic to explain it in some bit of detail. Um, what you see here is a blank map that I had just created. Um, I went to the file menu and created a new map, a World Kingdom map of all one terrain, blank terrain, and I set the hexes wide and high to be 100 by 50 because I knew that the map that we're tracing is a an image of a map that was 100 by 50. So this function is good if you have an image of a, of a hex map, whether it was created in Hexographer, Worldographer, or something else, and you're trying to trace over it and, and get approximately the same terrain uh, throughout the whole map. Um, I also picked that map here. I went to this button here, which says Select File. Until you've selected a file, then it uses the file name, and picked a map that we had exported from Worldographer a month ago. And um, this would also, this functionality will also work for uh, maps that are not hex based as well. So you could trace over some other fantasy style map that you might want to make a hex style map um, of. So let's talk a little bit about the rest of these controls. The opacity controls how easy it is to see the map that we're tracing. When it's 100%, you're not going to be able to see the map that we're tracing. Now, in this case, you can because it's all blank terrain, and blank terrain is mostly transparent anyway. Um, the top left X and top left Y control, where is that upper corner of the map that you're tracing over? So right now we're at zero, zero. I can shift this over and I can shift it down using these controls. Important to note that if we are dealing with a column based, uh, column based uh, oriented hex map, you're going to want to shift the top left by twos. Otherwise, it'll kind of skew everything. And likewise, if you've got a row oriented hex map, you're going to want to shift that top left Y by twos in order to keep things um, consistent. Now, if you look closely, you can see that the map that we're tracing over, that image that we're tracing over, is uh, very elongated. These hexes are double in size. That's because of these bottom two settings. Uh, if you remember, I said that the hex map that we're tracing over, I knew was 100 by uh, 50. Well, here by default, these settings are just saying, OK, make that image that we're tracing over, span it, scale it so that it's 100 hexes or tiles across and 100 tiles high. So if I change this back down to 50, you're going to see that we're going to get pretty close. So you can see there, if I go down to the bottom of the map, the bottom right hand corner here, we're off by a little bit. The reason we're off by a little bit is because of the staggered nature of the hexes. When we created that image for export, it added an extra half, half hex. Uh, it needed to add an extra half hex, half hex because half hex because of how things are staggered. Likewise, on the width, we have this little portion sticking out to the side there. And so we need to have an extra third of a hex. So once I've got those settings, you can see it's a pretty good match. You can also play with your um, hex width and hex height in case if the map was exported with hex size that wasn't the same as what you've got. You might need to play with those. You also may need to play with the size, the number of hexes. As I said, I knew that it was 100 by 50. If you don't know what that is, then you might need to go to the expand shrink columns rows, and then you would add a number of rows or columns to the hex to get or to the map to get the number of hexes that you need. If you don't have the pro version of Worldographer, you would go back, uh, because that's a pro feature, you would go back to new World Kingdom map and create a new map with an additional number of hexes or fewer number of hexes um, based on the, the settings that you had seen. So there's some trial and error. In either case, you'd have to kind of approximate how many hexes do I need to add, um, especially if it's not a hex-based map that you're tracing over where it's not quite as obvious. Um, and uh, it's just that with the pro version, you don't have to go back to the step of creating the map and resetting all this. It saves you a little bit of time. So once that's all been set up properly, now I can go to the terrain drawer here. And I'm going to filter this for classic terrain so it's easier to find the types that we typically use for this type of map. And I can then just place the terrain just as I would any other map that I'm uh, making with Worldographer 
Um, however, you can see that now we've covered up a couple of features. And so if I wanted to go back and put those features down, I don't know necessarily exactly where they were or exactly which types they are. So I'd go back to my trace underlay functionality and I can go back to, I mean, you could set this to 0% if you wanted to, and then you can see the map that you've created doesn't show up at all. Um, but we kind of want to see both. We want to kind of get a feel for where both things are. And so if I set this to 50, you can kind of see that the, this terrain was newly placed in the map above. You can see the color difference there between this and that. Um, but I can still see the features underneath. So that's, uh, that's pretty useful. So I can go to the features here now that I, that I can see again, and I can pick uh, features to place over there. I'm not trying to place the exact ones. I don't want to take the time to scroll through all the icons to find just the ones. Um, but these are from our, our recent Patreon uh, a month ago, uh, where we made a number of keep and, and, and um, other building types for the, uh, for the maps. So that covers all of that. The only other note that I'll make is we also have a functionality called convert underlay and you can go there, go to there um, and it will try to find the terrain that best matches the color under the center of each of these hexes. And it kind of gives you a starting point. If you're going to use that, I recommend that you save the file first um, once you've got it all set up so that you can um, undo and redo that functionality because that changes all of the all the terrain and if you get it wrong um, it it uh, it takes a long time to undo so you're better off kind of restarting um, that functionality um, and then you can tweak and, and uh, filter down which terrain types are in the list of terrain that it's using for example here I can go to classic terrain because that's what the type that we're using and I can pick the uh, pick all the terrain here that I want to use um, and I would filter out some of them that have similar colors that aren't uh, that I don't want some false matches on. You're still going to get false matches because at times um, it's going to find you know the 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 bluish color of the icon for the tropical forest here instead of the outer uh, the, the the fill color. Um, so you're still going to get some false positives. So it might be something where you might feel better just um, doing, doing it all by hand anyway and going through, uh, putting on some music, putting on a podcast and kind of just um, uh, filling in all the terrain by hand. Or, you know, if you get a result from this that's, um, that's approximately what you want, then of course that would be less work to just change, you know, 10% of the icons than than, than trying to uh, change all of the terrain. So I hope that's a good look at the trace underlay functionality that Worldographer offers. Um, I hope the tool is able to help you make some great maps. Thank you.